lights, camera, action. Hollywood, for some, is a place of hope and miracles, and others, it's a dark void of manipulation and disappointment. For Jean Spangler, it was the solution for her problems, and once she made it big, it was a way to provide for her daughter. Jean was a dancer, model, an actress who appeared in bit parts during the late 1940s. A bit part is a role in which there is direct interaction with the principal actors, but has no more than five lines of dialogue. It's a higher position than an extra, but right under becoming a supporting actor. She started as a talented dancer, which got her into this industry as an extra before she was slowly able to prove her acting skills in front of the camera. These bit roles began to get Jean noticed and her career was looking bright. She could feel the fame and fortune begin to seep in from the shadows. When the cameras were off, Jean Spangler was working through some personal issues involving her ex-husband, Dexter Binner, a plastics manufacturer. Her and Binner had a rocky marriage and only six months after being wed, Jean would file for divorce, citing cruelty. This didn't stop them from continuing an on and off relationship, and soon Jean would give birth to their baby daughter, Christine, in 1946. Dexter Benner was initially given custody of Christine, but after a tough battle, Jean ultimately won custody of their daughter. A short time after Jean wrapped production on The Petty Girl, she would go missing. This would cause one of the most mysterious and complicated missing persons cases in Hollywood during that period. All was well, and according to others, Jean seemed talkative and fine on the evening of October 7th, 1949. Around 5.30 p.m., Jean left her apartment on Colgate Avenue, leaving five-year-old Christine with her sister-in-law, Sophie, for the evening. Jean shared her apartment with her mother, Florence, However, she was away visiting relatives in Kentucky at the time. She came down the stairs and asked how she looked. Little Christine asked where her mother was going, and Jean replied, work, with a wink towards Sophie. Jean planned to meet with her ex-husband about a late child support payment before she headed to a film set. On her way, she would stop at a grocery store just a few blocks from her apartment. The clerk in the store is the last known person to ever see Miss Spengler alive. Although some say Jean wasn't supposed to be working that night, she would call Sophie later that night saying she would be working late. The next morning, Sophie would file a missing persons report. When authorities questioned Dexter Benner, he claimed he hadn't spoken to Jean in weeks. His new wife corroborated his story. Only two days after her disappearance, Jean's tattered purse would turn up in Griffith Park near Fern Dell. Inside was a letter addressed to a man named Kirk which mentions seeing a doctor. Jean wrote, Can't wait any longer. Going to see Dr. Scott. It will work best this way while mother is away. Some believe the note wasn't completed because she hadn't signed it. Many had initially suspected this Kirk was none other than Kirk Douglas, who was also in the film Young Man with a Horn, where Jean played a hula dancer. However, investigators learned that Mr. Douglas was in Palm Springs around the time of Jean's disappearance, and he was no longer a suspect. Jean's mother stated that a man named Kirk did, however, pick up her daughter once, but they had never met the man and he stayed in his car. After interviewing many of Jean's close friends, it became aware that she may have been pregnant at the time. As a result, the note she had written may have been alluding to receiving an abortion which was illegal during the 1940s and 50s. The investigation also revealed that Jean was having an affair during her marriage to Mr. Benner with an Air Corps lieutenant named Scotty. The man was extremely violent towards her and even threatened to murder her at one point. After Scotty's lawyer claimed that the affair ended in 1945 and they hadn't spoken since, Scotty was dropped as a suspect. The investigation would deepen when detectives would uncover that Jean had several relationships with men throughout both Palm Springs and Los Angeles. 
and one man was linked to organized crime. He and Jean had spent time together in Palm Springs a week before she vanished. This man disappeared two days before Jean did, and as far as I can tell, the man hasn't been seen since. Without a body, the case was never filed as a homicide, and no forensic evidence was ever recovered that could give the police a solid lead. Tips came in throughout the years claiming that Jean was seen in several locations around California, including Salinas and Long Beach. The police believe that in the end, Jean Spangler was murdered. No evidence or leads ever made them believe she skipped town. Once finding out he was wanted for questioning in the disappearance of Jean, Kirk Douglas contacted the police and stated he had never met Jean before. He later changed his story, claiming, Then I recalled that she was a tall girl in a green dress and that I had talked and kidded with her a bit on the set, as I have done with many other people, but I never saw her before or after that and have never been out with her. No one involved with Jean recognized Dr. Scott's name, which was on the note found inside Jean's purse. Later, during a press conference, Detective Lieutenant Harry Didion confirmed the existence of a physician named Scott, stating he was known to Miss Spangler and her group of nightclubbing friends. Police interviewed every doctor named Scott, but found no one with a patient or knowledge of anyone named Spangler. Mickey Cohen and his criminal empire reigned over Los Angeles during the 1940s, one theory suggests that Jean had a connection with the mob, seeing as two of Cohen's henchmen, Little Davy, Ogle, and Frank Nicoli, had disappeared around the same time as Jean did. The first suspect for the police was obviously the bitter ex-husband of Jean Spangler. Dexter Binner had the most to gain from Jean's disappearance. He would get his young daughter back and regain full custody, which he made very evident that he wanted. Jean bore a striking resemblance to the Black Dahlia victim, Elizabeth Short, and both shared a love for the film industry. District attorney documents and logs indicate authorities were attempting to connect the Elizabeth Short killing to Spangler's disappearance, as well as the murders of Jean French in 1947 and Gladys Kern in 1948. Former LAPD homicide detective Stephen Hodell believes his father, Dr. George Hodell, was in fact the Black Dahlia killer, and Jean just happened to be one of his father's victims. It's a fascinating case he goes into detail within his 2003 book, Black Dahlia Avenger. In the 1940s, Dr. Hodell had several run-ins with police, as well as being a suspect in the murder of his secretary. The police bugged his home in the 1950s, and although recordings of wrongdoings were collected, nothing pointed to him being the killer. He was performing abortions for the rich and famous, and a lot of the police officers if their girls got in trouble, Odell says. Steve Odell believes the mysterious Dr. Scott referenced in the note found in Jean's purse was another member of his father's active abortion ring, which was headed by Dr. Audrain and paid hush money to the LAPD. In his book, Hodel also explains that the Kirk from the note could be Dr. Eric Kirk, a physician arrested for performing abortions just days prior to Jean's disappearance. In addition, Jean's purse was found only a quarter of a mile from Dr. Hodel's residence. Steve Hodel would go on to state his older brother mentioned their father dating a gorgeous actress type named Jean around this time. This case just gets more strange the deeper you dive into it. I highly recommend checking out more about not only this case, but the murders of Jean French, Gladys Kern, and Elizabeth Short. I'll see you on the other side.